G'day guys, my name is Dave Tran and welcome to another Throwback Thursday edition of Guitar Zero to Hero Song Tutorial. And in this lesson I'll be teaching you how to play Don't Speak by No Doubt. Basics of this song, you'll need your guitar in standard tuning and you won't need a capo. So this song has a lot of techniques in it, so it's going to be a really good challenge for the beginner and intermediate players out there. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to GuitarZeroToHero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Let's jump straight into the intro. I'm going to start with a C minor chord like this. Now because this riff is only played across the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings, we don't necessarily need to play this full bar chord. We can just hold down these 3 strings. So ring and pinky finger on the 5th fret of the 4th and 3rd and middle finger on the 4th fret of the 2nd. The typical picking pattern is really easy. It's just comprised of 2 plucks. Our first pluck is the 3rd and 2nd strings together. And then our second pluck in the picking pattern is just the fourth string by itself. So one picking pattern sounds like this. Now this verse riff can be just finger picked. So if you're finger picking with just your hand, then you'll want to use your thumb for the fourth string and your index and middle for the third and second strings like that, which will sound like this. However, if you do want to use a guitar pick, then we can use hybrid picking. So that's a combination of using your fingers and the plectrum to pluck the strings. And using this method makes it a lot easier to go into the chorus and strum with your pick. So with hybrid picking, you'll pick the fourth string like normal with your guitar pick, but with the third and second strings, you'll be plucking it with your middle and ring finger, like that. For the intro, we have this C minor shape played for eight picking patterns like this. Now if the hybrid picking isn't comfortable for you, then you can just pluck the third and second strings together like that and then hit the fourth string. So it would sound like this. Then we get into the verse and we're staying onto the C minor chord shape and we're going to play the chord for four picking patterns. And then we're going to go to a G minor chord. You can play the full G minor bar chord like this if you want, but as I mentioned before, since we're only playing the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings, we can just push down these strings individually and not have to play the full bar chord. We play that for two picking patterns, and then we go to an F minor. Now that's going to be the same shape, just two frets down for two picking patterns. And then we go to a B flat. Now you can play the full B flat chord like this, or you could simply bar the third fret of the fourth, third, and second strings like that. Play that for two picking patterns. And then back to a G minor. So you're going to take your ring finger and just put it on the fifth fret of the fourth string for two picking patterns. Down to an F minor again. And then back up to a B flat. So the first line of the verse will sound like this. Then for the second line of tab, we go back to the C minor shape, play this for two picking patterns. Go to the G minor shape, play this for two picking patterns. Go down to the F minor for two. And then back up to the B flat. Back to the G minor. Back to the C minor. Then down to F minor. And then back up to B flat. So verse 1 in total will just sound like this.
Then we get to our first pre-chorus and we're continuing the picking here. So we're going to start with the C minor chord shape and we're playing this for two picking patterns. Then G minor for two picking patterns. And then F minor for two. And then to B flat for two. And then we're going to go to an E flat chord. So you can play the full bar chord like this if you want. Or you could just hold down these three strings with your middle ring and pinky finger on the 8th fret like that. And we're playing this for two picking patterns. And then we're doing another B flat chord shape, but it looks like this. So ring on the 8th, middle on the 7th, and index on the 6th. That for two picking patterns. And then we just end on a C chord shape like that and hold it out. So the pre-chorus will sound like this. So now we get to chorus one and we have four lines of chords here. Now we have all bar chords here. So we're going to start with an F minor bar chord up here on the fifth string like that. Then for our next bar chord, we have a B flat minor on the sixth string like this. And then we have an E flat. So that's a fifth string bar chord on the sixth and eighth fret like that. And then finally we have a C bar chord on the eighth and 10th fret of the sixth string like that. For our second line of chords, we go back to the B flat minor, and then we go up to the C, and we go to the F minor, and then finally the B flat minor and C. Now we have two strumming patterns here that we're going to use for this chorus, and we're going to be alternating between them for each chord. So the first strumming pattern goes down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then the second strumming pattern goes down, down, up, up, down, up. Now each chord will have its own strumming pattern, so you'll just alternate between the two, except for the last two chords of the second line where we just strum those chords once like that, and there's no strumming pattern. So the first two lines will sound like this. So notice how I'm just swapping between the strumming patterns for each chord. Now the third and fourth lines for this chorus will be exactly the same except for the very last two chords. Instead of going from the B flat minor to the C like we did in the second line of tabs, we're going to go to a C sharp major, so that's a bar chord on the 11th and 9th fret on the 6th string, and then we're going to a D sharp which is just the same thing two frets up. And altogether, chorus one will sound like this. When we get to verse 2, it's going to be the exact same as verse 1, except we're just playing the first line of tab. Now when we get to the second pre-chorus, this is all going to be strummed. Now we have two lines of chords here. We have C minor, G minor, then F minor, and then a B for our first line. Then we have an E flat, and then a B flat, and then finally a C. Now you'll see two chords within one set of brackets. Now that will just mean that those two chords are within one strumming pattern. Now the strumming pattern that we have here in this pre-chorus is going to go like this. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. Now you're going to change chords on the highlighted strum here, but it's the third up strum in that pattern. So for example, the C minor to the G will sound like this. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. 
and so on and so forth. Now the only variation we have here is the last C chord, which is played with its own unique strumming pattern, which goes down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And altogether the second pre-chorus will sound like this. Next we get to the second chorus and it's exactly the same as the first chorus with one variation. So in the first chorus we ended with these two chords, the C sharp and then the D sharp, but we're going to get rid of them and instead we're going to play an F5 power chord. So that's a fifth string power chord on the eighth and tenth fret like that. And then we're going to go down two frets to the E flat. And then we're going to take that shape down to the fifth and third fret, so C5 power chord. And finally an A5 power chord. And you're just going to move that shape up one string to the 4th and 6th frets. Like that. So those four power chords together. And from the 3rd and 4th line of the 2nd chorus. Next we get to the bridge and we have two lines of tab here. For the first line tab we're starting with the D flat 5 power chord, so that's the power chord on the 5th string, on the 4th and 6th frets, like that. And then we're going to A flat slash C, so to play that from this position you'll slide your index finger down one fret to the 3rd fret, and then your middle finger will go on the 5th fret of the 3rd string and you'll lift your pinky finger, but your ring finger is going to remain on that 6th fret of the 4th string. So that's A flat slash C. And then our next chord shape is a B5 power chord like this. And then we're going to a G flat slash B flat. So we're just doing that same stretch shape like this. So four chords there. Now in terms of strumming pattern, we're using a similar strumming pattern that we had in the second pre-chorus, which goes down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. And the point at which we're changing chords is the same as well. And you'll have two chords within each strumming pattern. So the first line of tab will sound like this. For our second line of tab, we're going to play a shape like this. So ring finger on the 7th fret of the 4th string, middle finger on the 6th fret of the 3rd. Now you're going to pluck the 5th, 4th and 3rd strings all together, like that. And then for our next shape, you take your next finger and put it on the 4th fret of the 5th string. Strum all those strings again, and then move your index finger up another 2 frets for the 3rd shape. And play that. Now the first two chords are going to be played with staccato, so you shouldn't hold them out. After you strum it, just rest your palm on the strings to mute. And you can hold out that last one. For the next bar we have three chord shapes as well. We start with the D flat 5 power chord like this. And then our next chord shape, we just take our middle finger and put it on that 6th fret of the 5th string as well. That's our second chord shape. Our final chord shape is just an A flat bar chord like this. Our strumming pattern here is down, up, 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 down. And up here in the tab you'll see where each of those chords need to change within that one strumming pattern. Up, 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 down. And the bridge in total will sound like this. Next we get to the solo, and this is actually played on a classical guitar with nylon strings, and that gives it a real Spanish flavour to it. I unfortunately don't have a classical guitar, so I'm not going to be teaching on that, but if you do have a nylon string guitar, then this solo is perfect for that. Some parts of this solo are quite challenging, so take it slow and then work your way up. To start this half, we have a five note run, which begins with our middle finger sliding up 
to the fifth fret of the third string. You can slide this up from anywhere, but it just needs to be a fairly quick slide. So pluck any note and then slide up to the fifth fret. Then we have fourth fret of the second, sixth fret of the second, up to the third fret of the first, and back to the sixth fret of the second. So that five note run. And then we have a two note section after this, which just goes third fret of our second string, and then third fret of our third string, like that. And so far. For our next little chunk, we take our ring finger, play the fifth fret of the fourth string, and then slide up to the sixth fret, like this. So that's really nice and easy. For our next two note chunk, we have the fifth fret of our third string, and then the fourth fret of our second string. And then after that, our next chunk, we have to slide up from the sixth fret of the second string to the eighth fret, and then go back to the sixth fret, and then we end on the eighth fret, like that. And so far we have this. For the next section, it's almost the same, except with one variation towards the end. After we slide from the fifth fret to the sixth fret here, that's where our variation starts. For the first chunk after this, we're going to get into this position. So ring on the fifth, middle on the fourth, index on the third, for the third, second, and first strings. Now you're gonna rake across these strings, meaning you're gonna play each note very quickly one after the other. It's almost like a strum, but a little bit slower. So after that, you're gonna go to the fourth fret, third fret, fourth fret, and then pluck the fourth fret and slide up to the sixth, like that. And then the final chunk of this, we go back to the fourth fret, pull off to the third, and then end on the sixth fret of the second string. And for the second half of this first line, Now this next run is perhaps the hardest in this solo, so it takes a lot of practice, but if you just keep at it, you'll get there. We'll have our ring finger on the 10th fret of the 4th, and our index finger barring across the 8th fret of the 3rd, 2nd and 1st. Now you're going to rake across these 4 strings, like that. So remember a rake is like a strum, but a lot slower, so you're hitting each note individually. After that rake, you hit the 10th fret, then go to the 11th fret, back to the 10th fret. Now you're gonna pluck that, hold it, and then the next bit is complicated. After you've hit the 10th fret, you're gonna then hammer on to the 11th, pull off back to the 10th, and then pull off again to the 8th. So the last note you'll actually pluck is that 10th fret there. And the rest of it will be just your fretting hand doing all the work with the hammer-ons and pull-offs. And so far we have this. After that, we go back up to the 10th fret, then we go to the 11th fret of the 2nd string, then 8th fret, 8th fret of the 2nd, up to the 11th fret of the 2nd, 10th fret of the 3rd, 8th fret of the 2nd, 8th fret of the 3rd, then up to the 10th fret, then 8th of the 2nd, 9th, 11th, and then back to 9th. After that final 9th fret pluck, we're going to do another hammer-on pull-off. So, hammer-on pull-off to the 11th fret of the 2nd, back to the 9th, and then we pull off one more time to the 8th fret. The last pluck that we have was that 9th fret, and then everything else is done with your fretting hand. So it's a little tricky, but just keep practicing it. And all together for that run. a little bit faster. And finally we get to our last line of tab, and this is a scale one, which might be a little tricky as well, but just keep at it. We're gonna start on the eighth fret of the sixth string, I'm gonna hammer on to the 10th, 
with your ring finger like that and then hit the 11th fret then we go to the next string 8th 10th back to the 11th of the 6th then back to the 5th string 8th 10th 11th then up to the 4th string 8th 10th and all together for that run After that we go back to the 8th fret of the 4th string, then the 11th fret of the 5th, and then we end by doing a hammer-on pull-off from the 10th fret to the 11th of the 5th string, like this. So that final run. And the solo in total will sound like this. After the solo we have verse 3 which is really nice and short. So we're going to play the C minor shape for two picking patterns, and then G minor for two, then the F minor for two, and then the B flat for two, and then after this we're going to go to an F5 power chord and we're going to start building this up with some palm muting. So just eight palm muted down strums on that F5 power chord. So to palm mute, take the fleshy bit of your palm, rest it very lightly on the edge of the bridge as you're strumming down. So eight times there. And then eight times up at a B flat five power chord. So altogether verse three will sound like this. Then for our final chorus, which just fades out to the end of the song, we have the first two lines of our other choruses. You just repeat that over and over again to the end of the song. So now we'll be playing through the song in its entirety and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks guys, hope you've enjoyed this more challenging tutorial. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Also be sure to subscribe to my second YouTube channel, Guitar Zero to Hero Express, where I just upload the covers for you to practice along too. If you've enjoyed this, then smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, and requests down below. I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.